Hello, this is Pete Guitar Martin, and I'm going to fulfill a promise I made in an earlier post and do a video on intervals. Intervals are simply the distance between two pitches. So if I go from open string to the first fret on the same string, I've increased my pitch by a distance of one fret. In Western music, we call that a half step. And that increase of one fret or one half step, as you will find out in terms related to the major scale and our official college level music theory class, if you wish, is a minor second. So we're gonna start out by showing you the one string chromatic scale and how we're dealing with intervals within that. There's, in one octave, there is a, there are 12 intervals, 13 pitches, counting the octave. And an octave just simply happens when we take the string and we play it open here, then we divide it in half by playing on the 12th fret. You could also do a harmonic by lightly touching your finger over the 12th fret. You don't have to take it away too quick. You do a nice click. I'm just lightly touching the tip directly over the fret. And after it rings, I take my finger away so it doesn't mute out. So that is open, then 12th fret harmonic, a natural harmonic, or open, 12th fret uh, fretted. So we went from open E on the first string to E on the 12th fret. So if that's an interval of an octave. Now, I'm gonna show you the names. Oops, whoops. I'm gonna show you the names and I'm going to then go back and show you the major scale and how we developed these names, all right? So if we go one open to first, we've increased one half step. That's called a minor second. Open to second fret, we've increased two half steps, which, or a whole step, which is a major second. Open to third is a step and a half, or three half steps. We call that a minor third. And then we go open to fourth, increase to four half steps, or two whole steps, is a major third open to fifth fret is oh boy now I gotta back up minor second major second minor third major third all uh Oh, yeah, perfect fourth. <laughs> perfect fourth. I'm already skipping ahead to the next interval in my brain. I could, that was why I was having trouble remembering this. This is a perfect fourth. So an increase of five half steps or two and a half whole steps is a perfect fourth. And then we, if we augment something, what do we do? We add to it. If we diminish something, what do we do? We decrease from it or subtract from it. So augment would be to expand the, augment would be to expand the interval. Diminish would be to decrease the interval. So now we're gonna talk about the note that's in between a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. And that can be described either as augmented fourth, where I expanded the interval from open a uh, half step, or I can call it diminished fifth. Augmented fourth, diminished fifth. The, the diminished fifth or flat five is used a lot in jazz music for you jazz um, aficionados. So perfect, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, also known as diminished fifth. Then we got perfect fifth. Perfect fifth is now an increase of seven half steps. The, so the augmented fourth and diminished fifth was an increase of six half steps. 
perfect fifth is an increase of seven half steps. And then we get into our minor sixth is eight. Our major sixth is nine. Our minor seven is an increase of 10 half steps. And our major seventh is an increase of 11 half steps. And it's major seven, why is it 11? Well, I'll explain in a minute. So major seven is an increase of 11 half steps and our perfect octave like we start out with is an increase in 12 steps. So just a um, reminder, 12, let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 is some kind of a magic number. Comes right from our four fingers, not counting thumb. Anyway, open, minor, second. See, I think this is good to, to, to sing this. You can, that helps with your ear training so you can hear something and go, oh, that's a minor second. I know what that is. Minor, second, major, second, minor, third, major third perfect fourth augmented fourth diminished fifth minor uh, no perfect fifth minor six major sixth minor seven <coughs> <laughs> major seven perfect octave oh man i'm going that falsetto it you know allergy season in my where I live is like February and March April and my voice my falsetto is not recovered from the coughing season for me but anyway so those are your <laughs> those are your intervals and I keep I'm, I keep asking why has YouTube classified me as comedy instead of music instruction I don't understand it anyway so I'm a good instructor aren't I okay humor's part of that all right so now. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you where these names came from. These are the official names in Western music theory, uh, which I think was developed in Europe. Um, you know, so the around the I don't know. Well, it was around in the 1400s. I don't know in, in the well. Anyway, we don't want to go into music history lesson right here, but you know there was certain initial music notation as we know it today started with um, religious choral stuff and people doing symbols on the staff relating to how high the conductor had their hand. Anyway, that's, that's, anyway, we got five lines, excuse me, hiccups, five lines, four spaces on our staff today, but all right, let's get back on the topic. So now we're going to play a two octave well, I'm going to play a two octave major scale just so you can see it. Because we, you know, we, when we do scales on the guitar, why not do the scale all the way across all six strings, which usually ends up being two octaves. So the, if I'm going to start on the um, A string, because it fits into my video screen easily, you can see I'm using real sophisticated equipment here. Well, hopefully it's advanced instruction at least. All right, so now we're at fret five on the sixth string, and I'm starting with my second finger, because I'm going to play... If, I'm just going to give you my finger numbers first. In guitar world, we number our fingers one, two, three, four. Piano would be one, two, three, four, five. But when I talk about the first finger, I'm talking about index and etc. Anyway, I didn't think about that. All right, so now we're going to... I'm going to give you finger numbers, because it's kind of easier to memorize that way, and it's a little bit hard to see with the, person, with the video I have now, but two, four... One, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two. That's how you play a two octave major scale. And uh, Solf, as you've heard uh, this in, uh, if you ever listen to Sound of Music, um, but this is going to be in Solf edge language, which is a sight singing language. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Re mi fa so la ti do do ti la so fa mi re do ti la so fa mi re do. Hear me jumping octaves there with my voice, so I don't. You guys don't have to listen to the cracking. All right. So anyway, so that's our major scale. If we number those scale steps, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or eight's the octave. 
which we call one again in the next octave. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, in chordal language, you talk about chord extensions. Extensions are the numbers that go beyond um, beyond seven. They go into the next octave. They extend into the next octave. That's why they're called extensions, like a C major nine. The nine is an extension into the next octave. Subtract seven, nine is two. So the interval of a ninth and the interval, the interval of a, a, no, a ninth and a second are the same. So anyways, we can number the numbers like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You're not going to see 14 15s in chords. I mean, you know, the 15 is the root. The um, the 14 is going to be the fourth. But you will see 13s and 11s and 9s in written in, in chords that have extensions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Do, uh, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Anyway, so this is a major second as a whole step. Uh-huh, see? Remember, when we, that's just why I'm showing you this because in relation to intervals. Major second is a distance of two frets or whole step. Major second. So if we want to describe this interval, we call it a minor second. Minor means we're going to lower something by a half step. Okay, just like augmented means we're going to increase something by a half step. Diminish means we're going to decrease something by a half step. But diminish, we're talking about either a diminished chord, which is a stacking of minor thirds, which are lowered thirds, flat thirds. Okay, anyway, then, so, or we're talking about um, the interval of a diminished fifth. So, anyway, when... You could even so anyway. We're so the so now you can see the, that these names of these intervals are relating to the seven scale steps or eight if you count the octave of a major scale. That's how it makes sense and fits together. So again, major second. So this is so this is this is minor second, and then you got a major third right here. This. I'm going from A to C sharp, or A to C sharp on the same string. So you can see two whole steps is a major third, so that so that's a minor third. So the first two notes in our pentatonic minor scale are a minor third. Minor means the third is not major, but it's a minor third. So if you see a C minor chord, it says don't play the first, third, and fifth notes of a C major scale. Play the first flat third or lowered third would be even better because we have sharp keys. Maybe, maybe the third's a sharp, and you go you lower it by going from a sharp to a natural. That's why flat third is maybe a little bit better term rather than... I mean, lowered third is a better term than flat third because sometimes you're going from a sharp to a natural. Um, or you're going from a C to a B, maybe, which is an enharmonic tone. A half step lower than C is B. It's not flat any you know anything. But anyway, so... Minor means flat third, lowered third. I, I still say flat third first because I think it's used more commonly. But anyway, so minor second, major second, minor third, major third, which is the same as one, three. So I can just go, uh, let me just do the, ma the intervals that are in that scale. Major second, major third, third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Major six, major seven, perfect octave. So if we just use those seven notes, those are the intervals that come out. And so we are going to use either minor or augmented diminished to describe the notes in between. Minor second, major second. Minor third, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fourth. You, you can play perfect fourth on guitar by doing this. All right, so that's that's just one. It's the same fret. One, 
one string higher is a perfect fourth. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, and then from here one to five is a whole step higher and a string over, and then you lower it. Now that's a diminished fifth. By the way, when we talk about intervals, we can play them at the same time, a simultaneous interval like this. That's a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. Or we can say it's an ascending interval where we play the lower note first, ascending, augmented fourth. Or we can say descending where we play the higher note first, descending, augmented fourth, ascending, diminished fifth, descending, diminished fifth, perfect fifth, fifth, perfect fifth, ascending, perfect fifth, descending. Okay, see how that works? So now, then we go, then the next note is gonna be a minor six. Minor six, cause our, come on, two, three, four, five, six. Minor, lower, lower that, lower that major six. Down, it's a minor six, and then the same, and then um, adjacent strings, it looks like this. There's our sim simultaneous, minor six, major six. Said James Bond or something. Anyway, all right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Hey, let's just go in order here. I'm sorry. I'm skipping around a little bit. Hopefully, it helps with some repetition and reinforcement of what I've already talked about. So, anyway, so, so we got all the way up to the minor six, major six, minor seven, which is our dominant seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Major seven, dominant seven. When we talk about a seven chord, it's not a major seven. If it doesn't have major in the name, there's not a major seven in the chord. If it just says seven, they mean lowered seven. So like some people would call a lowered seventh, also known as a dominant seven. Dominant actually means five, by the way. Five brings you back to the one. It dominates you back to the one. Five is dominant. Um, so... A dominant seven is our um, anyway. I'm, there's a, it gets it gets its name because there's a dominant seven in the chord that's built off the fifth scale step of a major seven of a major scale. So if we build a chord off of each, this is another thing we can do in another lesson. Probably be on the uh, the web version as opposed to my YouTube channel. But anyway, so so. One, two, three, four, five. If you you can build a major chord off of each of the scale steps in a major scale. If you build it off the five chord, you automatically get a lowered seventh instead of one, three, five major seven. It ends up being one, three, five lowered seventh or flat seven. That's our dominant scale. You take a major scale and turn the major seven into a minor seven. Then they call that a dominant scale. Goes to be seven chord. All right. So anyway, that's that's your lower seven. Then you got your major major seventh is your penultimate note, second to last note. And then you got your perfect octave. So let's just review that in terms of the major scale, and then I'll go back and do it on one string again, like we start out with. Minor second, major second, minor third, per, major third, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, diminished fourth, perfect fifth, minor six, major six, major, uh, sorry, uh, minor seven, Major seven, perfect octave. So there you go. And now we do it on one, try to keep it like this. We can go minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, also known as diminished fifth, perfect fifth, perfect fifth. Or we can now, we, I'm, I'm going to punt and go over and skip a string. And then a minor 
six. Major six, minor seven, major seven, perfect octave. So there you have it there. And just to review here, and I'll do it on the six string this time. Minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth. Augmented fourth, diminished fifth, perfect fifth, minor six, major six, minor seven, major seven, perfect octave. If you want to know more about the chromatic scale, I talked about that here in this intervals. I hope you enjoyed the intervals. I hope that you guys learned a lot and that I didn't leave any open questions. If you wanna learn more about the chromatic scale, I have a four-part series. The, in the fourth one, you, I go over four different ways to play the chromatic scale. Each one of the four parts of the series does a different method to finger the chromatic scale on the guitar. There's kind of like an, an intro video that just, I think I did it at four in the morning. The intro video is kind of a little bit rough, but you know, it covers everything. There's some cool improvising at the end of it, I think. And then, um, so then you've got part one of the chromatic is single string chromatic scale, like I use in this interval exercise. And part two of the chromatic is an open position using all six strings, but staying in open position. Part three is closed position using all six strings but not using any open notes. And part four is a cool one there where you're going one string higher and one fret lower in most cases when you change strings. So it's kind of cool looking because it looks like this. We're going up in pitch but down on a string. I, kinda, I get a kick out of that myself. But anyway, so check out those videos if you like. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Please click subscribe. Um, it, I'm trying to get a little raise in viewership. That would really help me. Share it with friends. And so if you like the video, hit like. If you're able to send me any kind of comments, I'm open to feedback on how I can improve and do a better job for you folks. And then... There's also a bell if you want to know when I post a new video and you want to get notified, you can hit the bell. So those are three things you can click in YouTube. They're pretty cool tools. You can choose none of them. You can choose one, two, or all three of them. But I, if you would hit subscribe, that would be the most helpful to me. Subscribe, like, and then um, the bell. And just viewing the video helps me too. So share with the family and friends and anybody who's interested in music or guitar that you think would benefit from this. I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Today is Sunday, May 25th, 2019. And I'm enjoying life. I hope you are too. Take care.